Kaze viewers, welcome to today's episode of Load Shedding, a show that focuses specifically and explicitly on the current affairs pertaining to the continent of Africa. And in today's controversial episode, we shall be focusing on a little country called Burundi. My name is Kees Kiwinda. The Burundian president, Pierre Nkurunziza, is known to stir up quite a bit of controversy. I mean, just look at the way he managed to change the constitution of his country to be in, a, in order for him to be able to run for a third term successfully in 2015. Now, in this case, it is something somewhat different. You see, he wants to moralize society and bring everybody together, you know, bring that love for each other in the nation out. And his method is quite simple, actually. It is by means of getting people married. The country's interior ministry spokesperson, Terence Ntairaja, naturally supports his president's stance. He says that there's an explosion in the population in terms of growth, and he numbers it down to several reasons, those being illegal marriages, polygamy, bigamy, and hundreds of schoolgirls getting pregnant. Traditionally, there are several things that a government would do in order to make sure that a population doesn't grow beyond the means of sustaining itself. Now, that would be through women empowerment, such as uh, sending girls to school, making sure that parents send their girls to school, stay in school and finish school, um, even making education free. Also, putting programs in place that teach the population on birth control, family planning, and even sexual education in general. I mean, we don't want people contracting diseases either because of being polygamous. As they clearly said, this is a problem. But instead, the Burundian government has chosen the route of moralizing their population by forcing people that are having a kid together but not legally married to be married by the end of this year. This was stated just yesterday, the 26th of May, uh, in public. Or a public message was sent out by the government. Now, the government goes even a step further by saying that state and church sanctioned weddings are not only the solution but are also a patriotic duty. In order to enact the president's orders, officials have started organizing mass weddings where they make sure that people that live together or have a child together but are not yet lawfully married do so in these ceremonies. Now, an undisclosed or unnamed civil rights activist has said that this is a violation against human rights as it forces two adults that simply live together but don't want to get married do get forced to get married against their wishes. Now, some states even go as far as creating aldorger lists where these people are noted down that live together or have a child together but are not yet married uh, in order to make sure that they do so before the end of the year. Now, there is, seems to be a bit of an oversight or something is overlooked with regards to uh, the government forcing these people to get married. You see, some people, in this case, there is, a, there is a mention of a person that wants to get married or wanted to get married to his girlfriend at the time. But when she got pregnant, he simply did not have the money to pay dowry for the girl. You see, in many African cultures, as in Burundi, it is customary that a man pays a dowry towards the family of the girl in order to get her, in order to get to marry her. Now, what happens in the, happened in this man's case is that he wanted to desperately, or he wanted to get married to his girl, but he simply didn't have the money to pay the dowry. So they said, "All right, let's just save up and then get married when we can." But five years later and three babies later, they still haven't gotten married. And now this poor man is facing a fine of 50,000 Burundian franc, which equates to 25 US dollars. The same activist that I just mentioned earlier also states that this whole forced marriages thing is part of a religious crusade led by President Nkurunziza and his wife, who are both fervent, born-again evangelical Christians. Now, the irony in this is, is that back in 2015, when the president was running for his controversial 13, third term, sorry, at least 500 people died due to political reasons, and 400,000 people have been displaced and now live in refugee camps in neighboring countries. And it is this same Christian president that now wants to impose moral values on his people. That was today's controversial topic. I hope that it has enlightened you and please let me know what you think of this situation in the comment box below. Naturally I'll also ask you to subscribe to me on both YouTube and Facebook and follow me on Twitter. My name is Case Kiwinda. Until next time, bye bye.